to my channel. I'm super excited today. We're going to be reading another short story. It has been a while since I did a short story. So I'm super pumped for this one. We're going to be reading one of my favorite stories, A Story of an Hour by Katie Choplin. And I'm going to be using a new palette. It's um, the Revolution Rachel Learly, I think. How you say your name? Um, I have some points from Ulta and I saw the word Rachel. And I was like, Rachel must have that. So let's get started. The Story of an Hour by Kate Choplin. Knowing that Miss Mallor was affected with her heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her gently as possible the news of her husband's death. It was her sister, Jocelyn, who told her in broken sentence, veiled hint that revealed in half concealing, her husband's friend Richard was there, too, near her. It was he who had been in the newspaper office when intelligence of the railroad disaster was received, with Brentley Mallard's name leading in the list of killed. He had only taken the time to assure himself the truth by a second telegram and had hastened to forestall any less careful, less tender friend in bearing the sad message. She did not hear the story as many women have heard the same, with a paralyzing ability to accept its significance. She wept at once with sudden, wild abandonment in her sister's arms. When a storm of grief had spent itself, she went away to her room alone. She would have no one to follow her. There stood, facing the open window, a comfortable, roomy air chair. Into this she sank, pressed down by physical exhaustion that haunted her body and seemed to reach into her soul. She could see in the open square before her husband the tops of the trees that were all queer with the new spring life. The delicious breath of rain was in the air, and the streets below a powder was crying its wares. The notes of a distant song which someone was singing reached her faintly, and countless sparrows were twittering in the eaves. There were patches of blue sky showing here and there, though the clouds that had met and piled one above other in the west facing her window. She sat with her head down, thrown back onto the cushion of the chair, quietly motionless, except with a saw came up in her throat and shook her, as the child who has cried itself to sleep continued to sob in its dreams. She was young, with a fair, calm face, whose lines bespoke repression and even a certain strength. Now there was a dull stare in her eye whose gaze and fix away of her yonder on those young patches of blue skies. It was a glance of reflection, but rather a indication, suspension of intelligent thought. There was something coming to her, and she was waiting for it, fearfully. Was it? What, what, what was it? She did not know. It was too subtle and inclusive to name, but she felt it, creeping out of the skies, reaching toward her thoughts, the sound, the scent, the color that filled the air. Now her blues and rose felt tremendously. She was beginning to recognize this thing that was approaching to possess her. She was striving to beat it back with her will, as powerless as two white slender hands would have been. When she abandoned herself, a little whisper word escaped her slightly parted lips. She said it over and over under the breath. Free! 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 The vacant stare and the look of terror that had followed it went from her eye. They stayed neat and bright. Her pulse beat fat, and the coursing blood warm relaxed every inch of her body. She did not stop to ask if it were or were not a mysterious joy that held her. A clear and excellent perception enabled her to dismiss the suggestion as trivial. She knew that she would weep again when she saw the kind, tender hands folded in death, the face that had never looked save with love upon her, fixed and gray and dead. But she saw beyond that bitter moment a long progression of years to come that would belong to her absolutely, and she opened and spread her arms out to them in welcome. There would be no one to live for during these coming years. She would live for herself. There would be no powerful will bending her in the blind persistence with which men and women believe they have the right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature. A kind attention or cruel attention made the act seem low, so no less a crime as she looked upon it in the brief moment of illumination. 
and yet she had loved him. Sometimes. Often she had not. What did it matter? What could love, the unsolved mystery, count for in the face of this possession of self-assertion, which she suddenly recognized as a stronger impulse of her being? Free body! Free body and so free! She kept whispering. Joseph Lee was kneeling before the closed door with her lips to the keyhole, imploring for a mission. Louise, open the door, I beg. Open the door. You'll make yourself ill. What are you doing, Louise? For heaven's sake, open the door. Go away. I am not making myself ill. No, she was shrieking a very exer of life through that open window. Her fancy was running wild along those days ahead of her. Spring days, summer days, and all sorts of days that would be her own. She breathed a quick prayer that life might be long. It was only yesterday she had thought with sudden certer that life might be long. She arose at length and opened the door to her sister's impurities. There was a feverish triumph in her eye, and she carried herself unwittingly like a goddess of victory. She clasped her sister's face and waist, and together they descended the stairs. Richard stood waiting for them at the bottom. Someone was opening the front door with a latch key. It was Brentley Mallard who entered a little travel stain, composedly carrying his grip sack and umbrella. He had been far away from the scene of the accident and did not even know there had been one. He stood amazed at Josephine's piercing cry, at Richard's quick motion to scream him for the view of his wife. When the doctor came, they said she had died of heart disease, of the joy that kills. All right, so that's the end of the story. Let me know what you thought about the story and also the makeup look in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe and share with all your friends. All right, I'll see y'all next time.